she's currently at work and you know we got to talk about it okay can we can you talk about it can we set up a zoom meeting at 6 30 this afternoon this evening um no no need for zoom um you know we can just talk over the phone i like zoom you it's easy or how about do you have an iphone um yes Okay, why don't we do it on iPhone then? I'd love to meet you, face you and your lovely wife face to face, please. Okay. Okay. Sure. Now hit me with that. Okay, that's that's what I would have done primarily. Okay. 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 Now, secondarily, gotcha. you said hi, Felipe. By the way, uh, I see you there, buddy. Yes. Yes. I, I'm so sorry. It took me so long. It's it's. Uh, I was actually making a uh, a call <laughs> with a with a seller. Boo, fucking who? But check this out, guys. Check this out. <laughs> check this out. It was worth it because one of the things that, that they don't tell you, this is like after you've been a, a God's uh, sales student, you know, like I, I always like to think about myself as the one with the slowest to learn and with the deepest pockets because I've been, a, I've been a, a client for about five years. But after a while, you just, you move to, to this wonderful country called IDGSL. You guys, any, know, anybody knows what that means? I don't give a shit, Len. So check this out. What happened? <laughs> I, I I broke one of my commit uh, one of my commandment. I mean commandments, yeah. Which is actually never go to a house if you're not picking up a check or a contract. Okay. I went to a house anyway. I went to a house anyway. Oh. And and it was you know like it was 75 minutes in. I I was worried that I couldn't you know pick up my girls on time and all that. And I said like you know what? What would Claude do in this moment? And I came up with this w, I mean, WD, WWCD. Yeah, WWCD. <laughs> and I said, like, you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm not sure if it's already patented because he's a trademark, but I'm going to use the Bobby Axel road flows. Oh, and yeah. I swear to God. Oh, I no, swear to God. I tell said, everybody the Bobby Axel road flows, the, the um, billionaire show. Yeah. So I swear to God, this is word of honor on the Bible on my kids. I said, like, sir, I have to leave. So here's a contract. In 10 seconds, we're either going to be best friends for life or you don't exist to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to say, I used to say you're dead to me, but Claudia made me stop saying that. Yeah, you, you don't exist to me. And, and, and they look at me like both of them look at me with like a, like a, like a awe in their face and they're straight to God, they signed the contract. So bottom line is that this shit works. Uh, you just have to go for it. You have to use it. It's it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's 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 counterintuitive, but it but it but it works. It's like and, and when you're at a, at a point where you're not coming out of a, a place of neediness and you know that you're gonna be doing other deals because you're talking to people, it's just it, it gives you it's a different demeanor and people can smell that either way they can smell desperation or they can smell confidence. So, so again, the Bobby Axel rock closed. Thank you, Claude. Cause you showed me that clip. And I said like, you know what, what, what the hell? What did it? Sir, you know what? I would love to do business with you. Uh, but here's the challenge. We've been, we've been here for about, you know, an hour and a half. Nothing is going to change if we, you know, you know, talk about, about this house for another hour and a half. So here's a contract. In 10 seconds, we either gonna be best friends for life or you don't exist to me. And I was started heading straight to the door. Up. And straight, like <laughs> straight to the face. <laughs> See, I, I love it. It's called guts for a reason. And oh my God. This and, is and my way. My wife, she's like, Did you really did that? Like when I when I show up at home and I go like, did you really? It's like, how come people fall for that? And and I go like, listen, it's just <laughs> I just, I just know that that it's shit fun. works and, so and that's fun. what's putting so the, you know, that's what's putting the kids on private schools, you know, somebody has to pay for, you know, like those, you know, like girl treatments and all that shit they do. Yes. Yeah, so somebody has to pay for it. So, so yeah. It's at a point, this is called the commitment to close. I've been talking about this all morning. You get to a point, say, look, if you don't want to do the deal, let's, we're grown men. So let's just say it's over right now, but remember why you came to me. Remember why you're here. And then you go down your three, you go down your three to six needs and greeds. You go down your bullet points. Sir, this is the problem. This is the situation. Do we want to do business? Because if, if you want to say no, now's the time to say no. If you want to do business, let's go forward. Because at 6.30 today, that offer is gone. And it's never going to be revisited. It's over. Or you can do it right on the spot like you did. The axle rod close. Yeah. yeah. It's a great close. 
Here's the thing. How do you feel when they manipulate you and you lie to you all the time? How does that make you feel? Like shit. Crap. Like shit, exactly. Yeah, it makes you feel like uh like you're you're worthless, that you know, like that their time it's more valuable than yours. And 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 also it makes you feel guilty because you're like, I should have seen this coming. And how do you do it? You ask the right questions. You qualify up front, qualify for money, qualify for authority, qualify for character. You just everything that it's in the qualification step in God. It's like it's like textbook. You just go for it, you ask go the question. Yeah. It, what's the worst that could happen? It's over. Listen, it's over anyway. He knows it, you know it. Might as well end it right there. I'd rather get a fast no. You're fired than this lingering, maybe, probably. Oh, you're a great guy. Uh, let's talk in the near distant future. You know, let's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, give me, uh, listen, I got to go on vacation. Uh, I, I'm going to the Chihuahua Festival in uh, East Bumble, Arizona. Um, uh, let's talk in two weeks. Okay. Give Look me at that, baby Levy. It's getting bigger, man. It is, yeah. He is a big, he's a good looking kid. Yeah. This is what happens when you marry beautiful women, Amir. I know. Look at them. Good looking children. That's that's the best. That's the best combo. You know, they have her eyes and my last name. That's all they need from me. So. <laughs> this, is, this is the most male centric. <laughs> I just did this week a huge group, the biggest real estate group in Israel, like 9000 people. That's a lot in Israel. It's a very small country. I, they call me to do like give content for a week and then like in the end of the week I can sell whatever I want. Yesterday I gave a post about scarcity. I never been in the beach in the US, but in Israel when you go to the beach we have great weather, it's very warm and you have people that uh, sell uh, popsicles, ice cream, okay? They walk with a box, cool. with a cooler and they sell popsicles. And they say only one, two words, I am leaving. Okay? They shouting, I am leaving. Okay? And the feelings that they make you feel when you know they're going to take this delicious cold take it away, ice baby. cream, you won't see them again. You need to buy now. What does the, every bartender say 30 minutes before closing? We close kitchen, yeah. What did they say? <laughs> two words. Last call. What happens? What happens to sales in the bar? When the bartender says last call, they really skyrocket. It, it quadruples. Oh, give me, give me two, don't give me one drink. Give me two me drinks. Two. Okay. Yeah, Amir, Amir, we need to change the fact that you haven't been in the beach here. Man, you got to come down to Miami and let's, uh, we get, let's put a, a, let's, you know, let's, let's challenge ourselves. I, I'm going to, uh, let's invite Claude and do like an event here in South Florida. I'm in, yeah, San, or... Di I'm in San Diego and it's 75 today. The beaches well, are- we, we'll, we'll just go to San Diego then. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do an event there, but uh, we'll, but yeah. meet, we'll meet Luke Quinal at um, uh, Ballast Point Brewery and then go to Felipe's for pizza. Nice. Oh, like a plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's the thing. When you're talking to somebody, you're asking your questions, you're finding their need or greed, the EQ is, a you know the EQ is greater than a five or a six. You know you're on the right side of the dial on the, on the math and everything. So, and then you use your imagine and you've got to get some kind of commitment there. I mean, you've qualified them for time, for need, for decision, for money. You know what's going on here. You've got, before you get off the phone, you've got to get a commitment and you got to get a, something, something either hard, a hard commitment, a signed contract, a check, a credit card, um, or at least another appointment. You've got to get something. But if you just leave this dangling, oh, well, you know, yeah, give me a call. Uh, give me a call Friday afternoon uh, after three o'clock and uh, we'll work at this. You can't. That's what a mediocre sales guy does. That's what a that's what an amateur. That's what a broke guy does. Sometimes you got to go for it. Say, look, sir, I'm not trying to put you under pressure. Let's do that role play. What, what, uh, was it from you, Alan? We, you said we never did that yes. role play. Uh, you, you said my wife's feeling, pre my, my, my husband said that uh, he doesn't want to make this decision under pressure. Let's do that role play. Okay. Set me up again for that role play, like the wife All said. All right. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, hey, Alan, I'm, I'm just uh, calling you back. Um, I mean, hey, Claude, I'm just calling you back. Um, yeah, um, yeah, we won't be taking the offer because my, my husband doesn't want to make a decision under okay. pressure. Okay, then it's over. Yes. Okay, no, that's great. I, pre I appreciate you being so direct and straightforward. Now that it's over, can I ask you a question though? Uh, sure. You told me you and your wife have been looking for their husband. You and it's San Diego. Anything goes here. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty soon you can legally marry sheep here in California. Yeah, I mean everything. Oh, <laughs> Sheep's need love too. But I make no ju <laughs> but I make no judgments. I don't want to <laughs> <think. laughs> I'd be no judge, yeah. <laughs> you don't judge. Listen, you came to me with a problem. You said you're living in a small house. You said you've been watching the rents go up, the prices go up, double and tripling and everything. Why are why are you accepting this? You know, why are you accepting all this? Is it's a it's a is this a money issue? Is that why we're not doing business today? Because this problem is just going to get worse and continue. Rents are going to go up even more. Prices are going to get, while we're speaking right now, before the end of this year, I bet you this house goes for 10% more the way the market is right now. Why are you putting up, why are you putting up with this? How do we solve this problem today before I go? Um. I guess I guess he's going to need more time to consider it. You don't have time. You're out of time. Can you imagine you and your wife, you're retired, you're in your 60s, you're getting your pension, your Social Security, and you're in a house that you bought for 500000 uh, today and 20 years from now, it's worth one and a half million dollars, $1.25 million, and it's free and clear. Can you imagine that for a moment? What does that feel like to be retired and have that much equity in your own home? Aren't you sick? That'll be, aren't that'll you be sick? great. Aren't you sick of mediocrity? Why are you putting up with this? That'll be great. That'll be great. But you have to take, but you have to be proactive and take an action. Listen, after I get off this phone, we're done. And I'm gonna, I and I get this feeling you're gonna have a lot of regrets because I'm gonna call up. I've got see this list. I've got 15 other people to call who are gonna grab this property. Are you positive? You don't want to call your wife, your husband, your sheep right now, and make a decision to get this home because you're never going to get this opportunity again. You're right. Let me let me give him. I know. Let, let me let me have a heart to heart with him. You got you got 30 minutes to get back to me. I'll hold off for 30 minutes. If 31 minutes after after we get off this phone, I'm I'm calling all these people on this list. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't grasp, don't grasp defeat out of the jaws of victory. That was, that was solid. Yeah. Um, lesson learned. I should have, uh, I forgot to ask now that it's over. Now I'll that go it's back over. To the, See, it's never go over. back to the pain points. It's, it's over when over. you say it's over. You Think about over. that. Think about that as, as hitting the reset button. You know, you hit the gotcha. reset button and you start all over again. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. Lesson learned. All right. Yeah. You got to stroke um, and nurture. You work so hard. You're living in this one small place. You've been wanting to buy a place, sell a place, invest in a place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Tracy and I were talking about he has a client who has a multi-million dollar property if Tracy can get it rezoned. It was a great role play we did. Tracy, uh, and we were talking about closing this guy on the first phone call, not the follow-up phone call for a multi-million dollar property. Tell them, tell them what you would do. If you could go back in the time machine, Tracy, tell them what you would do. I, I get the commitment, <laughs> the, the commit to close, which is there. You got a great property here. Uh, suppose uh, I was able to, you know, get this thing rezoned to get you the money that you're looking for. Um, would you be willing to uh, sign a contract today so that I can get to work on your ass? I, I, I would really get there, like physically up front in the face, or um, you know, close. Meaning you're 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 getting con. Tracy, we don't have a good connection. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You're going in and out, buddy. 
I'm sorry. The, the thing about it is, what have you got? Here's the way I look at it. What have I got to lose if I go for it? Yeah, he's going to think I'm a little pushy. I'm a little assertive, uh, a little aggressive. But I can always fix that. I, bo- I always believe I can fix everything later. That's you know? a that's a great role play because, I mean, one of the things is uh, when, when we're having these calls, it's like sales is dangerous. And sometimes, you know, if, if we don't execute right, uh, prospects will feel pressure. And, uh, and, uh, so I can be the prospect Claude. Yeah. You know what, Claude, I'm feeling a lot of pressure. Um, you know, you know, I'm, you know what you should be, sir. This is a, you know, I'm an adult, you're an adult. You came to me with these problems. I don't think the money is the issue. Uh, I think right now uh, on a fear factor, you're a, you're a nine or a 10. It's, this is scary, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, I thought you uh, were. Yeah, one hundred and five percent honest. It's just I, I, I was, I, I wasn't thinking on, on, on making a, a commitment. Uh, I get a lot of these calls, and uh, I mean, I, you sound like you know your stuff, but I do, sir. I, I'm very successful, sir. You, do you know why? Because you probably, you know, you do, you do a good job, but I no, not I, pro- not probably, sir. I do a great job. Yeah, you sound and you like can, uh, and you can say no to me right now and this is over and don't worry about it. Um, uh, we're still friends. I, I won't make the offer again, but you came to me with a problem. This is the solution. I made you an offer. We can move forward or we can say it's over. You decide, sir. And I know I'm I probably sound like I'm putting a little pressure on you because I think this is what I think you need a little pressure right now. Yeah, you know what? I've been I've been neglecting on this decision for a while, but uh, can I ask Wait. you a small favor? I don't know. Can you give me till six o'clock to talk to my wife? I'm going to have to change my schedule. I, uh, I have a Chuck E. Cheese pizza re- uh, reunion um, at six. Um, I'll tell you what, six on the dot on Zoom. Can we do that? Uh, I prefer FaceTime. Uh, we can do FaceTime. I have no problem with that. And I only ask one thing in return. We'll do it on FaceTime. We'll do it at six o'clock. I'll change my reunion and I'll call up all my guys from college. I'll push it back to 630. The only thing I want to know is, yes, we can move forward or no, it's over. Can you do that for me? That You got my word. I know. I know. And you're the kind of guy who keeps his word. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that's who I am. I'll talk to you then. Boom. Did you see what just happened, guys? Scarcity, reciprocity. And consistency. He made he you see, like by by giving me a stroke of of mentioning that I'm a man of my word, now I have no way out. I'm gonna talk to him at six o'clock. <laughs> There's absolutely no way out. What do you mean by consistency? Consistency, it's a it's a psychological trigger. I think Cialdini talks about it. It's uh uh it's I mean it's also known, I think, as commitment. Uh, when, whenever you're you know, like, for example, you say something in public, you know, I'm going to like com- consistency will be 75 hard, you know, like when, because you're, you made a commitment public and you, you gave your word, you're bound by it. And people, you know, typically people, they, when, when you call them out on that, they, they, they really, they reciprocate. Yeah. You've got, you've, you've got to take it away from them scarcity, whatever you call, sir, I'm busy and everything. I even rechanged, I changed my Chuck E. Cheese pizza reunion. Okay. Um, anything, which is just for jokes and, and stuff like that. But sometimes you've got to make, oh, I don't know. You've got to struggle. That's the whole point about it. Oh, I have an appointment. I'm going to change my schedule. I'm going to do this for you, sir. Cause I think this is so important. I'm going to change my schedule. I'm going to change my meeting. I'm going to change my dinner time. I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to hire a babysitter. Uh, whatever I need to do. So why are we, you know, we're doing, we're, we're, why am I imposing all this on that prospect? Because you're getting an IOU. I'm okay. doing you a favor. Now, here's what you need to do in return. And depending on the, on the personality of the prospect, reciprocity, it's a huge trigger. Huge. It's very big. Reciprocity, um, scarcity, 
social proof. The, the one line I did earlier, sir, why do you, you know, pat yourself on the back once more. Sir, why do you think I'm the busiest investor? Why do you think I'm the most successful investor in Chula Vista? Why do you think I'm this or that? Why do you think I make a great living doing what I do? Take a guess, sir. Even when they say, I don't, even if they say, I don't know, I don't know. Yes, you do, sir. You're a smart guy. Give him a stroke. You're a really smart guy. Take a guess here. Well, you must be good. That's right, sir. I'm very good. So do you want to, do you want to get this done? Do you want to get this problem behind you? Do you want to make some money? Do you want to sell the house, buy a house? Do you want to do whatever you want to do? Or, or do you want to have this conversation five years from now and, and still, and, and still have the same situation. I think you want to move forward today. Why do I feel that way? And you you got to force him to paint himself into a corner sometimes, or get it over with. The, some of the best move, some of the best times I ever had were uh, this morning. I had made a guy an offer today. I was telling Tracy about it before. I made a guy an offer yesterday. All of a sudden, all you ever notice when you make someone an offer, you set a hard time frame, and all of a sudden you get a little email or a text the next day. Oh, the you know the tornado hit, and uh, they took away my uh, they took away my five Dalmatians, and all of a sudden these great tragedies seem to appear when you're doing the uh, when you set that time frame. You ever notice that? And I I fired the guy. I said, sir, I, uh, sorry about your this this incident and everything. Uh, I wish you well. Uh, a gift is attached to this email, my, my book, um, but my offer is expired. It's off the table, never to be revisited. What do you think happens when he gets that? A hard rejection triggers, triggers scarcity. It's just, now they want it even more. Oh, yeah. He starts to doubt, starts to doubt about whether or not he's... Uh, he did the right thing or not yeah very well very well said lou and he's oh wow i missed this once in a lifetime opportunity oh no well let me call him back maybe i can make it right so now i got a chance again maybe i'll get a call back or if it's over it's over and at least i had the satisfaction of not being a beggar when you beg or you totally submissive to the pro oh don't worry about it oh things happen oh call me back in five months when you uh you know when the problem is over and everything what does that say to them about you you're desperate you're There's desperate no you're a beggar you know oh i can call this guy anytime and everything. no scarcity is so scarcity is so powerful especially blended with social proof. When I say to them, why do you think I'm the busiest investor, consultant, uh, assigner, uh, entre arbitrage? Why do you think I'm so busy, sir? You know, and then you, you force them, you force them to start selling themselves. Oh, you must be good. You're right, sir. And this is the problem you came to me with. Don't you want this behind? Imagine for a moment, then you go into guts 2.0 and, and you do the imagine stuff. See, you're still, you're, you're still in control when you do this stuff. But when, you, but when you're just answering their questions and letting them control the, well, I don't know, I'll think about it. You're the 10th guy to call me, call me in a week, send me the contract, send me the information, I'll think about it. I can't do that day after day, hour after hour. My, my ego won't let me, and I'm not an arrogant person. I just don't want to be manipulated and waste time all, uh, 